So this is lesson one of the first stage of the syllabus and in this lesson we're covering the general description of the instrument and packing and unpacking. So first of all, maybe useful for you to do a little sketch in your notebooks of the instrument itself. Uh, as a brief, this is the number two Mark III star. You've both got similar uh, Mark III star or Mark III star star instruments between you to copy. There, are, there is also the Mark IV, Mark V and Mark VI. The only significant differences on the instrument in service today, the latest instrument, is the Mark VI, in which case we have the, the, the sling coming off of the ends and we've got some changes in, in the middle here. They all operate in the same manner and they have largely the same components, but the, the most noticeable, in, you know, if you get issued Mark VI instruments, you'll see that the sling attaches to the ends uh, rather than in the middle here. So we've got a number of parts to identify as We've sort of said none of you have been familiar with the, the, the instrument before, so we'll work through them one by one. And what I, do you recognise this <coughs> as in looking at the instruments there? Does it look the same to you? Yeah, yeah. The correct answer is yes. yes. So, part number one, the outer tube. This is the tube that runs along the whole thing. It's 80 centimetres long. It's around two and a half inches in diameter. Uh, the reason it's 80 centimetres long is because it's an 80 centimetre 80 centimetre base for the prism. That's what you are uh, running all of your calculations and everything on. It's made out of light metal. Do not squeeze it too tightly. It will uh, it will damage easily. It's there to protect the uh, internal mechanism, uh, but it's not. It won't survive sort of blows or anything like that. It will dent easily even to the point that if you, when we come to disassembling the instrument, if you grip the end too tightly, it will start to, it will start to dent it. So it's made out of very thin metal. It is covered with a canvas material though. So any idea why you'd cover it in canvas like this? And glue it Thermal, to it. keep it. Yeah, absolutely. So it stops the heat um, distorting the instrument and uh, the lenses inside. Uh, also means it can be painted quite easily and the paint survives a little bit longer. So they'll all come in service pattern green. Uh, all of these are in, in, in the same colour. You may come across them in different theatres you know, painted accordingly. So they are all in, in that service pattern. Uh, partway through on, on here, yeah, marked up as number two on the plan here, are two loops. Uh, slightly different scale to this, but two loops to attach the sling to. So, you know, first part is the outer casing, then you've got these two loops, leather, leather fa uh, fairways for, for the leather. Then you have part three, this piece in the middle here, here, which is the carrier plate. If we just undo the instrument, from its tripod, you see, that's fitted here. Uh, that's what goes into the tripod. It's, it's smooth on one side, and on the other, it's actually uh, got some grooves in there that match into the grooves on the main part of the tripod and the smooth plate on the other, so that it won't just spin round once it's in the instrument. So this, the carrier plate here, the carrier plate moves. It moves around so that you can move it up and down once it's in the tripod. So that spins around the body of the of, of the rangefinder, like so. It also has is fitted with the cover uh, that wraps round and covers the eye shields, provides them with extra protection. It's screwed in one side, and then there are sh screws that just hold the ends of that cover in place. Uh, on the other, you've got one instrument there where you've got the leather cover and one with the canvas cover. So this it all it's easy to always work out. Say the serrated edges away from you, so in this case the instrument is as if you were using it. Obviously that's going to be the wrong way round for me, uh, it's as if you were using it. And we can see that once we've got it fitted it's easy to rotate there. So the carrier plate as such, we've then got our eyepieces. The left eyepiece and the right eyepiece. In the right eyepiece is where you'll see the, uh, the image of the object that you're going to be taking the ranges from, and it's in two halves. If I just quickly, we'll cover this in more detail, but this is our eyepiece, and in the top half you are seeing what is in the left hand image, 
but it's inverted. And in the bottom half you're seeing the right hand image, but it's the right way up. So the right eyepiece in the top half of that you're seeing the left hand uh, image and in the bottom half you're seeing the right hand image here. So that's in the right eyepiece. In the left eyepiece you're seeing the uh, scale, the range scale, which looks like so, and we've got a number of, of scales on that. And as I said in the introduction, it goes all the way from 20,000 and infinity at one end of the scale down to uh, the, the shortest range on there as well. So, you know, it, it down, down to your minimum range. So you've got the eyepieces there. On the top of the right eyepiece here, you can see there is a focusing lever. If you want to flip off the, uh, the covers there, you'll be able to see and look at that a little bit more closely. So you can see that you've got the, on the right hand, you've got this focusing lever. Because there is some magnification in the, in the eyepieces, uh, but that just enables you to focus it on the object itself. So then, if we're looking, I'm going to tip this up towards me a little bit. Oh, I can't, it's, it's full extreme. But you can see on the back of the instrument, but behind the left eyepiece, is you've got this cap here. That, if you look inside, enables you to see the range scale but for an observer. So that's a secondary, so when you are working as your pairs, you're gonna actually be able to see uh, the, the, the range taker can lie looking forwards or sit looking forwards, directly opposite him can be his partner. In this case, you know, the other one, uh, other one of you guys, reading the scales off uh, so that you can be making notes, producing that range card or whatever, because you're not gonna be interfering with the uh, visuals in any way because you're, we're going to be looking either side because it looks out in that direction. So uh, sorry, either so side. One is focusing, one is using, and the other is to. It can be there. yes. If you if you've got somebody else to be able to take the ranges for you, and we'll be using that in training when the you know when you're each checking each other's ranges yeah. uh, and and making notes of those against maps and things like that. Okay. So yeah, number seven, the front range scale window. Then number eight, can you see number eight? We have the handles, uh, two handles. Those handles fold, like so, uh, you know, right and left handle. They enable you to either support it uh, when it's, uh, or well, turn it while it's on the tripod, or they enable you to support it when it's, uh, when you're using it uh, in, the, in the air. Um, you don't need to use it on a tripod all the time, uh, but you can, you know, it can be rested on the chest. So you've got th those handles in place, and those handles are really important because the Right handle here, just below it, marked up number nine on the on the diagram, is the working head. The working head consists of a uh, a, 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 a thumb piece there. Uh, the the rotation rotating it does actually move the range scale, and it, it is what is operating the left hand uh, prism. So it's moving that. So that's what then gets you the focus. It's worth remembering that so the right hand prism doesn't move, that's in a fixed position. It's this left hand prism which you're adjusting with the working head is moving inside here so that you get the focus on the object that you're range against. And the working head is what you'll be adjusting while you're uh, taking ranges against the object all the time. Near the left hand lever, you can hear it operating there. Those are the astigmatizers and we'll come on to what the astigmatizers are used for but they affect uh, it, they're effectively to turn point objects into long lines. So you put the astigmatizer lenses, these, these fold down at, at the end, that's how you put those into operation and uh, those, effect, th those make it easier to see objects in low light conditions or sort of point objects in low light conditions or bright objects. So it turns a point into a line and of course we need lines to be able to, to take these ranges because we're going to try and operate it like that. Uh, so yeah, it enables you to turn those in. So that's the astigmatizer lever. The number 11, on each end you'll notice uh, these, these are the tube ends, they're slightly bigger. These rotate, like so. So for storage, to protect, 
the, the lenses and everything, these rotate. So these are your tube ends. And on, on the left hand side, you actually have a locking catch for that as well, uh, which we'll come on to in a moment. So the tube ends there, uh, obviously cut out. You know, they provide some additional protection as well. The left hand tube end also covers, I'll turn it around to show you, uh, a, a wheel underneath. You can just feel that underneath there. That's the halving adjusting, adjusting head. <coughs> so that will actually, if this image in the top left is not looking at what you want it to, this is what will be used to adjust that. Uh, and then you have a small lever that may be hidden behind a little window for you. And this is the coincidence adjusting head. And it pops out on the spring, doesn't it? So yes, yeah, so that's, that's the uh, coincidence adjusting head. That is connected to the window just to, so you can uh, revolve the, the image slightly if, if for any reason it's out, uh, the prism is out of kilter. So you're able to, to take that. When you look at the front of the window, when you look at the front of the window, and if you look in there closely, uh, inside this left wind, in, inside here, you'll actually see a scale that moves with the coincidence adjusting lever. So that, that scale should stay at zero unless, unless, you, um, unless you are adjusting it for any particular reason. So that coincidence adjusting head. That pops back in and then the little window goes in front of it. It's about a four-handed operation, uh, but you're able to do that. Not on any of the instruments we've got today, but you do have protecting caps that fit over the front. There's small rubber pieces that tie around here. Uh, if they're, they're certainly present on the Mark VI. They're not present on any of these, but they're small rubber pieces that go over the, uh, over the caps there, just to protect the, uh, the ray shades in the same way. So, at either end, you've got these larger rubber, uh, rubber and canvas covered uh, end caps to you know, basically a, a additional protection. That's what takes the bumps and it also makes sure that this, inner, this, this outer tube here is protected as much as possible when it's in the cases. The, as I said, the right window um, as such, what have we got, the locking piece. There is a locking piece uh, to make sure that these, these can't be taken off very easily. Uh, and we'll cover that with the disassembly. So, any, if I missed anything on these whatsoever, so far? No? No. Any questions on any of that? So yeah, you mentioned the spring that comes out here. Yeah. Well, what's that? So that's the coincidence that's adjusting the head. Adjust. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so that little door comes back across. Um, we'll talk about then the tripods, because there are two different tripods we've got <coughs> present. The one that I have in front of me is the stand number 14, Mark III. So this is fully adjustable, and we can do it with the instrument on it. So this is the one that's in service. It's adjustable to the height there. It does also have the individual legs are adjustable. like so. So actually that instrument is able to be used a lot more flexibly from behind cover, uh, from almost a standing position mounted on something immovable and in a line position. The stands that you've got are the infantry stands, so stand infantry number one or number two, and for, for the range finders they are much shorter, they are still in service and they, you, you may well be issued those, you may well be issued both that provides a much more flexible, uh, sorry, a, a much simpler arrangement if you don't need to set up on uneven ground. Obviously, this will work for uneven ground, uh, but you know, you, they work as well. They don't do anything different. This will come into its own when we're out doing field field work, um, field duties. Though those stands are much simpler, uh, much more effective. Uh, both are still in service. You may well come across it. So, what you have as well, as you'll notice, as it's moving, the it's fitted, as I talked about, we've got that uh, plate that it's fitted to. It's then tightened by a thumb screw so that it doesn't wobble as it just was. Those are the stands. So can you identify 
the name of number one. The outer casing. So behind you, the name of number two. What's the function of number two? Uh, it's the uh, sling uh, attachment trap. Number three, at the back. That's the um, for the tripod. Hold it. What's it called? Try again. Number four at the front, then. It's the left eye piece. Number five right. uh, is the focusing lever. Number six. Didn't identify number six. So number six identified on here is the rubber eyepiece. So some of these are fitted with rubber eyepieces. There are spares available. Uh, they wear easily, they tear easily. So you'll use those when you're in the field or you, for light conditions because you don't want any additional light getting in there. But for normal use, you don't need one. Uh, they, are, they are fitted though, so, or they're available in, in, in the cases. So that's number six. Number seven. Uh, is the measuring gauge or something? Front range scale. Eight. Go back to number eight. Down the bottom. Oh, the easy one. Handles. Carry. Uh, yeah, easy one. <laughs> easy one. <laughs> Number nine, where's number nine? Here. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that's the focus adjuster. Yep. Working head. Working head. Number ten, Riley. Is the astigmatizer lever. What does the astigmatizers do, Brian? What do they do? Uh just as focus. Turns point like into vertical lines. Vertical lines, yeah. We will learn much more about the astigmatizers. <laughs> number 11, Fisher. Oh, which was number 11? <laughs> number 11. What did, what's number 11? What do they do? Uh, what uh, are they? Sorry. The, uh, they're, the <laughs> they're the tube ends. They pro they're, they're what spin round yeah. for, the, for the lens. They provide a ray shield as well. I didn't say they obviously provide a ratio to stop the sun going into into the lens too much because okay. we just get too much glare otherwise uh, where's number 12 Where are the uh, lenses top Wiggins what are they lenses they're the end caps oh. they're the lens covers they're not fitted on these instruments number 13s end caps end caps them number 14 brown Didn't talk about it. It's the <laughs> it's the stop. So it's what actually you'll you'll see that this is the stop cap. Uh, it's the stop lever. So when you are rolling um, the lens cover, the the end end caps around. This one's quite stiff. Uh, there's a lever on that left hand one that stops you turning it too far. But if you need to turn it further uh, for for access to either the levers. Um, or, or maintenance, you, you have this, this lever in place on the top of that left hand, uh, left hand lens is there. So that is the stop lever. Number 15, where's number 15? I was not, wondering that. There is no not number. there, 15, 16 or, and uh, 17 are internal parts. We'll, we'll come to that. Number 18. Who was on number 18? Go on, Fisher. What's number uh, 18? It, yeah, it's, um, um, I had it. It's gone. <laughs> it's the coincidence adjusting. Coincidence adjust, yeah. Adjusting lever. Uh, coincidence adjusting head. Then number 19 is the, where is it? Find it. Tripod? Nope. <laughs> underneath. Underneath, underneath your left. It's the halving adjusting head. That will be very useful. You must remember the halving adjusting head. Probably outside of the working head, the one uh, the one adjuster you'll be using the most, um, the halving adjusting head. Because, remember why, what the halving adjusting head does? Underneath that left is the halving adjusting head. Yeah. Remember what it does? Okay. It moves that left hand prism so that you've got, so you, moves this top image up and down so that you can actually see uh, what you, know, you can you can make it 
certainly on skylines, you'll be able to make it see the same area as the bottom does. It'll be much more obvious when we do actually start to look through these. So that's your halving adjusting head, and so the coincidence adjusting head, it, it moves this, uh, rotates the prism a little bit uh, to enable you to, to straighten those up as well. And then we talked about the two stands. What stand is this? Number 12. Number 14, close. Number 12 is the range finder. Yeah. So this is the range finder number 12. Uh, what mark of range finder is this? Mark 2. Mark 2. Mark 3. Mark 3. I don't know what it is. Mark 3 star star. Uh, so there's also, so this is the number 12 as I said. There's also the number 2 in service. It's worth pointing out the number 2 is for the gunners. The artillery use the number 2. They, this is 80 centimetres in length. The number two is one meter in length to give it additional range. You may come across, you may have to use the number two. The principles uh, and the techniques are exactly the same. It just has that greater range. You will find some of these marked up as the number two as well. And I believe one of the instruments that you've got is because it's the number two infantry rather than the number two artillery. Prior to uh, the 1920s, we all used the number two. We then decided that it was easier to understand if the infantry one became the number 12 and the artillery one remained the number two. So that's the number two, 12. Uh, the artillery is number two. Number two. Yeah. The, the stand though is the number 14. <laughs> and the stand that you have on those instruments is the stand infantry number one or number two. Is it mainly known as stand infantry? Yeah, infantry stand, yeah. Any questions? No. So let's do a pop quiz. Pick a number. Ten. Pick a person. Uh, Giles. What's number ten? Left handle. What does that do? Oh, it's your stigmatizers. Stigmatizers. Never forget your stigmatizers. Wiggins, pick a number. Uh, Eleven. Pick a person. Fisher. Um, cover thing and heads <laughs> protectors. <laughs> End caps. End caps. End caps. Oh. Fisher, pick a number. Uh, nine. Brown. Uh, the um, working head. Excellent. Well done. Pick a number. Uh, Three. Where is three? This piece here. Proper name for it. Pick a name. Uh, Giles. Oh, no idea. Not even made the notes. No. Carrier plate. Carrier plate. I think you might need to spend some time just improving your diagrams yeah. and making some notes before we move on <laughs> to <Bigger> books. <laughs> before we move on to packing and unpacking, because we'll obviously use these terms throughout the course. So spend some time improving your diagrams and making some making some notes on these. Uh, you may come and uh, refer to the manual should you need to identify the proper names, but I would expect between you, you should at least have uh, the names. So as a quick you know, final pop quiz, anybody, please call out. Number one. Outer casing. Number two. Sling attachment. Number three. Carrier plate. Excellent. Number four. Left eyepiece. Eyepieces. Uh, so this should be marked up as both here to be clear because number four is eyepieces. Number five. Focusing lever. Yeah. Number six. Uh, rubber eyepiece. Good man. Number seven. Front, wind, front range. Either. Secondary range scale. Second range scale, front range scale window. It's the same same purpose. Yeah. Number number seven, number eight. Handles. Yep. Number nine. Working head. Working head. Number ten. Stigmatism. Stigmatism. Stigmatizers. <laughs> Stigmatizers. 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 <laughs> number eleven. Tube ends. Tube ends. Number twelve. Protection caps. Number thirteen. End um, things. End caps. End caps. End caps. Yeah. End caps is fine. Number 14. Stop lever. 
Not a lever, lever. just a stop. Right, it's stop. the end cap stop, so it stops it rotating round. Number 15, 16, and 17. Internal. Internal stance. Number 18. Coincidence adjusting head. Number 19. Tripod. Working head. Working head. Oh, Harving adjustment head. Harving adjustment head. You're correct. <laughs> Number 20. Not there. No. Not there. <laughs> so, uh, I'm now going to just don't look up. Look at the instruments that you've got between you. Where are the? Where are? The, where is the actu? Where is the sling attachments? Where is the centerpiece? Where is the eyepieces? Which one is the left-hand eyepiece? Excellent. Which one's the right-hand eyepiece? Which one has the focusing lever? The right-hand eyepiece. Where is the front range scale window? What does it have? There we go. What's the function for it? Secondary observation. Somebody else can see. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Where are the handles? Do they fold? Yeah. Yes. Where is the working head? What does it do? Twiddly, twiddly, twiddly. It adjusts. <laughs> Number 10, where is the stigmatizers? Move it. We go, you get to, 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 to yeah, that's what you'll be using when you have low light conditions, difficult to see objects, uh, big bright fields, things like that. Uh, number 11 is the safety stop, the end cap stop. Yeah. Number 12. Where are number 12? Not here. Yeah, yeah they're, they're missing on these instruments. Number 13. Ends. End yeah, caps. end caps. Uh, the stop for the end caps. The little uh, little screw that's in there yep. stops it moving round. Number fifteen is not there. Sixteen, seventeen internals. Eighteen. Yep. You got your little window open. Yep. There we go. And then number nineteen, the halving adjusting head underneath. And you've got the tripod. So. So spend, some, spend a little bit of that time just improving your drawings, improving your notes, putting that back together, Fisher, and then we'll move on to packing and unpacking the case. So you do that, I'll put this in the case. So hopefully you've all got a better diagram now and you've got all got the parts lifted, listed. So the moving on to packing and unpacking because you will get them in the box, the case. This is the rangefinder's case. It's not a box, it's not a chest, it's a case. It will come, it has two straps to uh, keep, keep it tight because we can't rely on this catch. This catch is just uh, not there on this one. This catch is on this one. We've now got you know, two catches either side here that slip down but we can't rely on them. So we have the web straps, or if you're carrying it forward at all, web straps. It opens, and you'll notice, before I get into packing and unpacking, two white lines in there, therefore creating the artificial infinity for when we go to test that. It has obviously the carry handle here. It has also a lever, that's uh, a stand that's just dropped back there, so it can stay upright, which will become important when we do artificial infinity. So let's move that round. The instrument as you can see it's fitted into the box it can sometimes be quite a tight fit this one isn't because it's been used many times for training uh, if to fit it into the box you must have the end pieces turned upwards the handles folded and the eyepiece turned so that the set the, sorry the center piece turned as far away from the eyepieces as possible towards the back of the instrument, to, towards that front window. So as we showed you, this rolls round. So this centre face needs to be turned all the way around to the back. And that is how handles up, sling out of the way. It does fit in the, in the case with the sling fitted. The sling just fits up in there like that. Now those small stands uh, that you have, 
do actually fit in the box as well. They have a small leather case. There are two boxes in service. As we said, you know, one has this center catch. This one has the white lines painted on the outside. It may also have a very sticky center catch, which this one does, so we need to turn it. This one has additional poles inside for creating artificial infinity, uh, and those slot into, slot into the box or are pushed into the ground. Otherwise, it's exactly the same. But in this case, we, we're looking at this box with the two white lines inside. So we can clearly, you know, this is how the, the instrument needs to be transported in our 1500 weights, universal carriers, uh, limbered wagons, if you're working with the Australians, it, it, it's how it needs to be carried. However, when you're moving forward and you're in action, we have the cover. And this is the rangefinder cover. And the cover's canvas web, uh, Canvas and web manufacture, it has some additional pockets inside, lots of padding to protect the rangefinder, the instrument, uh, some additional pockets and padding in here so that you can carry cleaning materials as well, so polishing cloths or anything like that. Uh, you, you won't be expected to be carrying spare parts for anything like this, you know, it's an armourer's task, not the range takers, take, well not the range takers task, but it does have all of this padding. It's fitted with a sling to make it easier to carry and a case on the outside to carry the instrument, uh, sorry, the stand instrument number 14. If you have the infantry stand, you will need to be carrying that in its leather case and put over, uh, carried over the, uh, the web strap, the web closure strap. It's the only place to carry it. You then have the, the additional fittings on the outside. So to, to fit the instrument, to move the instrument from the case to the cover, it's simple, it goes in in the same way. This base of the centerpiece needs to go into this leather to here to stop it ripping through the material. And then the end caps will face the padding on the end there. So it all fits in quite neatly like so. It is a tight fit. It is an 80 centimeter long case for an 80 centimeter long instrument. The sling can fold in. You have two pop stud type break pop. You know, uh, eyelets on, on, on the end on the web straps there easy to do those first like so you then have one in the center which will go over like that you then have two shorter uh, thinner web straps that you need to do up it should never be carried uh, without these done up because it will fall out and you will break it and there was glass and you will be charged for it you then have the stand on the outside like so. Stand already folded, fits into the base there, into the top half of, or the top part of it there. And then you have this short buckle to tighten it up. Like so. So you've got that and you can adjust it obviously and carry it slow. Um, you can carry it in any other way you wish, but generally, as long as it's safe in that instrument, for short distances, while it's on your person, it'd be absolutely fine. Obviously saves you carrying the case for it as well. So carry it in the cover when you're on exercise or on operations. If you are moving in vehicles, this is not sufficient protection to protect the prisms if you put it down in the vehicle. It will damage it if it remains too long being jiggle juggled around while you're in vehicles. So when you're in your carrier or your fit or your truck, it should go in the case, not in not just in the cover. So you need to move that from there. Any questions on any of that? Happy you could do that with what you're doing. Yeah. Yes. So what we want you to do is to uh, set down and put the you've each got an instrument and you've each got a case. Fit the instrument into the into the cover. Sorry, you each have a cover. Uh, fit those into the cover. You, you they are obviously set up, so you will have to remember to move your uh, center centerpiece and turn around the end caps. Indication that that centerpiece isn't in the right place if the uh, cover doesn't move.
Remember to do your pop studs at the, your studs at the end, at the arc, the end properly, and in the middle. So you two at the back, what have you noticed that's different about your cover? You're supposed to be good observers. It doesn't have a uh, outer pocket for the... For the stand? For the stand. Excellent. What would you do with the stand? Uh, for that stand? Yes. Uh, Put it over your bow, man. Just, just carry it. All you've got to do is carry it. Yes. You know, don't drop it. Don't lose it. Don't drop it. Uh, if you, you know, this is an earlier type of cover that's still in service. You, if you have the short stand infantry, you'll have the leather case to be able to put round the, uh, the the securing strap. If you've got one of the uh, instruments stands, then you can put that round the securing strap just as well. It keeps it together. Probably less likely than uh, than dropping it if it's put in your belt because obviously you're wearing your web equipment as well. Um, all fit okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, so take it out and re set it up again. Do that for me with the instrument. That one isn't secured tight enough. This one moves the stand. Easy way of checking. Happy? Good. Well done. If we're so, when are we carrying it in the case? The vehicles. In the the in transit. When are we carrying it in the cover? Moving forward in the field. On you. You're carrying it yes. in the cover. You're not putting it down. Okay. What? So there's four things that could go wrong when you're loading it in the cover. Uh, how would it be difficult to load it in the cover? If you try to put this towards the back of the cover. Yep. So if you haven't got that centerpiece in the right place, right place. it won't fit properly. Um, you haven't got them fitted on yours, so it wasn't a problem. Clearly, uh, the, the one in my uh, cover has got a sling on it. That can get in the way. Make sure that's folded properly and in the right place. The pads inside the cover will cause problems. If one of those is ripped or torn, it will get in the way of you loading it as well. And what's the other uh, thing that has to be done when you're putting it into the cover? No? Holding the handles. Yes, it does. That, that's sort of a bit simple for what I was looking for. <laughs> Absolutely. But well done for pointing out the obvious. These yes, have to be, yeah, the end pieces. End pieces, have, end pieces to have to be folded upright. Uh, or roll of you know, yeah. rotated upright. So, any questions on any of that? Uh, no. No. Okay. So you're all competent and uh, and happy to to do that. Good. Then we'll move on to lesson three with care and cleaning shortly. Thank you for watching. Please remember to like and share the video and subscribe to the channel. Please support us on Patreon if you're able to, and let us know of anything you'd like to see in the future. I look forward to hearing from you.